Hey yo family, welcome to the very first ever on this channel movie review. Roll it. Welcome back to the channel everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano The Third. Y'all guys, third family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you like what you see at the end of the video, consider becoming part of this little family we got. Click in the subscribe button, bottom right hand corner. Now, once again, I think I've said it in basically every video since it happened. I can't thank the Patreon subscribers enough. They're the ones that are allowing me to even still be on this channel and not just exist on the channel, but be able to go full time on YouTube, which allows me to open the doors and expand what the channel has to offer because I could only do one video a day prior and I do music reactions. So that was basically all that this channel could ever be. But now that I'm full time, two, three videos a day, I can finally make videos live like this and get into movie reviews, get into movie scene reviews, iconic things like that. And the first one that we have today is The Social Dilemma. I actually posted a post on the community tab of this channel the other day saying that I recorded commentary for The Social Dilemma, which is on Netflix. Would, would anybody be down to see that? And I got like 85% yes, so here we are. Now, if you do the mathematics on the timeline, I obviously lied on that post because here I am recording it after talking about that post. So I had not pre-recorded it. I wanted to get test the waters, get a feel if anybody would be down for it. So y'all were, so here we are. So if you don't know what it's about, it's basically about the social media era and the, so, the new world that social media has created and the flaws of social media and the down and the downfalls of it, the pitfalls of it. And the two main things that the movie is concerned with is one, how your information is shared and data mining and you're being sold to, to different companies for advertising. And two, the way that it's affecting the world and the algorithms and people's mental Mental health whenever it comes to social media. Now the movie is what's posed and called as a docudrama, which basically has factual information in the same way that a documentary would, you know, with graphics and with talking head segments and things like that. But it also has a fictional element to bring home and to like, to emphasize the points of the concepts that are being talked about. Cause obviously, you know, not everybody has that high level of understanding about how things work. So it helps people to visualize if they have, if they have what's being talked about broken down into a storyline. So first off, let's talk about the bad or what I didn't like about the movie. And there really wasn't too much, but there were some key things that stood out that I that I fucking hated. The first one being, and I know that for documentaries, it's like a necessary evil, is setting up and, and how they set up the, the movie and the, and the drama within and the lighting and the DP selection, which is director of photography and the way that they chose to light the scenes, the talking head segments, which like they showed everybody getting prepped for them, makeup and them saying that they're nervous and all that. I understand all of that was to set it up as if like they're going against the industry. These these people who are former high level executives at Facebook and Pinterest and Twitter, yada, yada, yada. They are being poised and being postured as whistleblowers in the documentary, which I mean, I guess you can kind of say that they are. But also at the same time, a lot of the stuff that they're talking about is common sense, or at least for me, it's common sense. So the whistleblower, I understand that it has to be done, that the way that they set it all up, it just seems very passionate in my eyes. And the second thing that I didn't like, and I actually fucking hated this more so than the first point, was the whole segment where they anthropomorphize like the algorithm and how and how it's designed to catch our attention through the help of the actor. I, I don't know the actor's name, the one who played Pete in Mad Men. Like they have him tripled as if like triplets and they're like manipulating our minds by saying like, by moving certain things in front of us and trying to understand, like it basically just shows how the algorithm works and how it gets better and, and captures our attention. Every time that you get on social media, it just gets slightly better and slightly better. It's just like, damn, those scenes were just so bad. Those were hella pandering. Those were like, come on, like you didn't need to anthropomorphize the algorithm. I understand that the algorithm is hard for people to understand, but at the same time, people get ads every single day about the things that they're talking about and about the things that they're searching. So just through common sense, like you understand that everything is meant to hold your attention. Those scenes like they, they undermine the entire seriousness of what was going on because you could tell that they were hella forced. For me, they were basically the worst part about the film. I don't know. I don't know if it was overacted. I don't know if the way that the, the script that they use was bad. It's just, it just didn't strike me as like something that was needed for the movie. And other than that, the only other portion that I was kind of like 
ah, kind of cringeworthy on was the uh, was the fictional part about the movie, the actual drama part about the docudrama, which had the family like the the fa I think it was a family of five, and how the and how basically the kid went insane by getting like all the same feed over and over, and he couldn't be without his phone, and then at the very end he ended up at like a he ended up at like a rally or a riot and getting arrested and all all because based off of what he saw on social media, like that to me also seemed forced. I was not really about I was not really about that whatsoever like it took the concepts and the things that it was trying to talk about and basically took it to like the crazy extreme level like so far extreme that in my mind that happens maybe like one percent of the time and it really wasn't that extreme when it started off with it was just like yo can you be without your phone for a week like that was legitimate like being bored without your phone like you know wondering what's happening on social media what am i missing the fear of missing out fomo as people call it like that was all legit but the moment that he went to go to the riot like that's when i was like all right this is this is on the extreme side of what actually goes down on social media and maybe that's just me being ignorant maybe that happens a lot more than i than i anticipate but you know a lot of what you as long as you have common sense online you know you're not going to ever get into that position so much and to be honest when i said like maybe i'm ignorant to the fact that this happens more often than not i think this documentary didn't hit as hard as i was expecting it to because of my position in my generation where i'm at i am a hundred percent a millennial i'm 31 years old so i'm right between the generation who grew up with no internet and the generation that grew up only knowing that the internet exists and only knowing social media exists. So I think that that helped me in terms of what I thought about the movie. I think that helped to water down what the movie was talking about. Because to me, a lot of what the movie is talking about, you don't need to hear from executives of social media or former execs. Like you should know that these things are happening. But that might be because I know both worlds. I grew up without internet, without a cell phone, basically until I was like, a sophomore in high school that's when I got a cell phone and then not until like my sophomore year of college did the iPhone come out so up until then didn't have access at all times to internet or Facebook or my MySpace didn't even have an app on a phone because that's how that's how far pre iPhone it existed Facebook was only able to be accessed by college students when I was able to access it you had to have a edu account in order to get on Facebook I knew what it was like to live without these things but if I take myself out of my shoes and out of my con and sense nature knowing that like our data is being mined all the time knowing that our our information and our eyeballs and our attention is being sold all the time i'm a youtuber like the whole point of youtube is to keep you engaged and keep you active on the site so that way the site can sell more advertisements for your eyeballs and me and my common sense nature i'm like well yeah that's the way that advertising works like that's the way corporations have been doing it forever that's why the super bowl advertisements are 1.5 million dollars for a 30 second advertisement because there's a lot of attention on the game no, nothing is revolutionary here other than the algorithms that pinpoint who you are and pinpoint making you stay on these apps to see advertise to see more advertisements but if I step out of my shoes and step into the shoes of a younger kid that is definitely where I see that there could be issues because you know social media only shows the only shows the highest of the high and one of the stats that was pointed out in the movie is like younger pre teen and teenage female like you know self-inflicted wounds and suicide has increased exponentially like I think it was a hundred and hundred and fifty percent on average for both and that increase can be directly correlated to when social media took off like that's a real thing because now I realize the younger generation they don't have that that same common sense that I do in the movie it depicts a little girl like the sister of the brother who went to the riot like it picks the it depicts the younger sister like comparing herself and putting on filters because she didn't feel good enough about what she looked like originally because without the filters her engagement on her post was very little compared to with the filters the engagement on her post was was like amazing like that is a real life consequence of social media back when i was little we only wanted to be like the movie stars we didn't we didn't want to be youtubers we didn't care about david dobrik and how much money he had none of that existed all we saw was hollywood when you see hollywood you know that that's like stardom level that is like one percent of 1% of the entire population. It doesn't have that same sting when you see these people at that level and you're not. But social media now, like, you know, you can be Instagram famous 100% literally without being anything but hot. So there is no disassociation between like, like there is between me and Hollywood. I know that that's a huge gap between me and them. But when you see somebody on Instagram right there in front of your face and they don't do anything but be on Instagram, it's easier to think that that could be me 
and why isn't that me? And then you go down the spiral until you end up like, they're better than me, I'm not good enough. And what makes it worse is that social media is designed, and this is what they talk about in the movie, it's designed to get your attention more and more so that way the advertisements can show up. But to these little kids who aren't, who aren't consumers, they don't care about the advertisements, all they know is that social media is engineered and designed to be on more so they are on it more, and then they have lower self-esteem because they are on it more, they're, not, they're never without their phone and they see everything extravagant happen with that, happening without them. And for me, that is one of the real psychological consequences of social media is how is the younger generation gonna be able to adjust to it? And again, the social dilemma, the movie pointed out that it is like evolutionary. It's not, it, social media does not fit in there to be able to adjust easily. Our brains have only been developed enough to, to care about that small group of people. But now that social media is here, you know, now we have millions of eyeballs out there that we're trying to like, appease and that is not good for mental health hence the statistical correlation of suicide and self-harm in females younger females so i think that the documentary did a good job posing those type of issues and i think the other issues that it did a good job was was talking about the spread of disinformation or or false news fake news compared to real news and that was something that i didn't even think about or didn't realize before the documentary but you know the algorithms that you see the algorithms that are used by google and facebook and youtube they are called causing what, what this political divide is between the left and the right and causing all of these different things in terms of you know riots and in terms of peace and it's good it's good to be able to for for you to see the other side and see the other argument but the algorithms are not designed for you to see things that you don't like that is specifically what the algorithms are designed to do. You search for something, and the next time you go to, for, to search for something similar, it takes you down the path that it thinks that you wanna see. So if you're already on the left side, you're not gonna ever get the right side's argument because it's only gonna show you what you wanna see. But when it comes to politics, in order to be the best informed person that you can be, you have to see both, both sides. But the algorithms and social media, that is not the way they're designed. And that's it's not a design flaw, it's just people who wanna spread this false information people who want to spread this disinformation they know that they can utilize the, the algorithm in that way to make sure that if you're slightly on the left that you go further down on the left or if you're slightly on the right you go further down on the right and I think that that is where it is important that people need to realize that this that the algorithms are going to do that to you that's what they are specifically engineered to do to show you things that you like to keep you on these to keep you on these sites longer and I feel like people realize that with like products so if you search for like like a camping tent or you search for like you know rims for your car you're gonna get nothing but advertisements based off of that because the algorithm wants to show you what it thinks that you want to see or buy but I feel like most people don't realize that that is the way that news works as well and honestly I feel like I'm very intelligent I feel like I have enough common sense to know that you know I'm being manipulated so I know that that's the way that these things work I didn't stop to think that that is the way that that's the way that news spreads on the internet because I personally do look at both sides but people who don't realize that about the algorithm they might they might drift further in one direction which is what's causing this current political divide worldwide especially in the United States but worldwide in general so those were basically the two concepts that the whole movie was talking about at a more in-depth level but I appreciate them because I feel like while it might be common sense for me for a lot of the older generation it isn't common sense and for the younger generation they don't know that they're being manipulated they don't know why these things are happening happening or why their feed looks the way that it does and I feel like if this documentary is going to help then it's doing its job especially if you go toward the ending credits of the movie and, and you know the whole thing is, is basically like bashing you know how how the algorithms bashing social media like I get that I get what it's about but I also I also respect that it tells you at the very end you know what you can do it's not just presenting a problem it's presenting a solution as well it kind of telling you what you can do to combat that like go and physically Basically search for both sides of the argument basically telling you to understand that the algorithm is not perfect it's, de it's designed to show you what you want to see so if what you want to see is both sides of the coin then that's gonna help the algorithm understand that like it presents it presents things that you can do but overall other than the Pete from Mad Men scenes other than the over exaggeration of some of the things that it's talking about if you just look at the, the if you look at it from the very middle not at the over exaggerated level it does present a lot of good information on how social media works works, especially for people who are not in my generation. It's going to be especially effective, I feel like, for, for parents 
parents who are not millennials, parents who are like Gen X, but they have younger children, I feel like it's gonna help bridge that gap because I feel like a lot of the times, the parents don't know how to parent towards something that they never had in their childhood. They never grew up with social media. They don't know how people make money on Twitch. They don't know new media. They don't know how I'm making money on YouTube or how Patreon works, but they support it. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like this movie or this docudrama is mostly gonna help people who are not my age. Cause people who are my age, we're like in that golden era where we know what social media is and how it works, but we also know how to be off of it. We know how to socialize in real life. We know that what we see on the gram is not real life, you know, 99% of the time. So I feel like this movie is gonna help like older parents understand how social media works and how it's influencing their children and it's going to help them parent to that and then also the younger kids it's going to help them realize what social media is in the grand scheme of things because they've never known a world without it and all the negatives that this documentary talks about i feel like as time passes on those negatives are going to get watered down because there's going to be more information out there millennials like myself are going to be having kids they already know how to explain social media to the kids that they're gonna be having so when their infants are 10 years old and we're 45 we know what we're talking about when it comes to social media so I feel like as time goes on especially Millennials turning into parents and then Gen Z turning into parents like all of these things that we're talking about will be watered down because right now we're just seeing this divide because we're going from a physical information age to a digital information age and that is happening right now like in our generation so once we become the older generation and then the generation that grew up with nothing but the internet becomes the older generation, we'll be able to talk to those things a little more fluently and hopefully educate our younger generations on how the internet is good, on how social media can be good and make sure that they're aware of all the pitfalls that come from it and ways to avoid falling into those traps. But overall, Social Dilemma, if I had to give it like one out of 10, I'd probably give it like a seven and a half. Those Pete scenes by themselves dropped the whole, dropped the whole fucking rating down, probably a whole point. But a seven and a half, if I was watching it from an older generation or younger generation standpoint, I would probably give it a nine because it, it does provide a lot of legitimate information. It's just information that I already knew. But that concludes today's movie review. I hope y'all guys enjoyed it. I don't know if it's long-winded or not. After I edit it, we're gonna find out. It's not a rough start, but it's the first one. So we're only gonna get better from here. We are like the algorithm, basically. We start at a blank slate starting position. And as we go, and as we make videos, and as we hone everything in, we're eventually gonna just be cruising on these things. But this is the end. I appreciate everybody who got this far. Patreon, y'all are probably gonna see this in advance of everybody on YouTube seeing it. But that's it. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, hit up the Discord. Discord all down in the description below. But like I would say at the end of all of my videos, I appreciate y'all's time. Go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other, and I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.